So I wanted to speak deeper on Bruce Lipton's Biology of Belief. So I just want to briefly cover what this means and touch on a few different subjects. So when we talk about the biology of belief, effectively what we're saying is that beliefs control human biology rather than DNA and inheritance. And then there's a few other elements that we're, we're discussing here and, and one of them is epigenetics, nurture and nature. So that's three different elements. When we talk about epigenetics, we're talking about the study of how behaviours and environment can cause changes that affect the way the genes work. Now, when we talk about nurture and nature, this has been a, a constant debate within, within I believe, the, the scientific community. And when we talk about nurture, we're talking about our environment. Um, does our environment make us who we are? And alternatively, when we talk about genes or, or nature, does nature determine who we are? But when we talk about epigenetics, arguably we can say that epigenetics takes into consideration nurture and nature, which can also be seen as genes. And when we're talking about epigenetic factors, and remember when we're talking about epigenetics, we're talking about behaviour and environment, we can look at various elements such as psychological state, diet, smoking, drug abuse, financial status, exercise, social interactions etc so let's give some context so if we take jack and jack smokes his behavior contributes to his poor health or if we take sally and sally has a good diet her behavior of having a good diet is a contributing factor to her positive physical health or if we take leon and leon is surrounded by entrepreneurs her fam his, his parents are entrepreneurs, his friends are entrepreneurs and he models himself on this and he becomes a successful entrepreneur. We can argue that his environment as well as his belief contributes to his entrepreneurship. Now of course there's some counter arguments here. For example, is there an entrepreneurial gene? Are genes a more significant factor with regards to physical health or is someone's body composition more of a product of their gene structure as opposed to being a product of their dietary choices. So let, let me ask you, when it comes to nurture, which is the premise that our environment makes us who we are, do you think that's significant? And if so, why? I think that our environment often shapes us, uh, maybe even more significantly than than what what we are born with. Mm -hmm. um, if you live um, and grow up with people around um, that uh, that highly values education. Mm. If you uh, live in a community that um, that say has um, a, a lot of academics in it, um, I am sure that your choices um, and your understanding about how you should make your choices mm. will be influenced by that a lot. And um, and if you live in a, a in a, in a in in a poor society, I think that is going to also um, put many obstacles on the way in 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 your way to achieve. Um, certain things because you will have different values that you have grown up with. So with regards to the whole premise that beliefs can control human biology and with regards to the epigen epigenetics premise where you have like beliefs and environment can you know kind of shape our destiny 
I guess the first thing is, do you agree with that premise? And then the second thing would be, do you think you could give some examples where where that is true? So I can give you a quick example. If you take like a great boxer, yeah, they might have some genetic material that will make them a great boxer, reflexes, speed and power. Mm -hmm. But they might also have some environmental factors such as they might have a great trainer or they might have great trainers that nurture their technique and also on top of that they may have an unshakable belief that they are really good at what they do mm -hmm. so in that example maybe you can see how the belief in the environment has an influence but also there's a genetic component as well can you think of any examples um when um when you were talking about the boxer yeah I was thinking, um, for example, you know, there are these families yeah. that, um, for example, that have been doctors mm. for generations, mm. you know, and this little Tom grows up um, with his mother being doctor and father being doctor and mm. his grandfather is doctor and his great great grandfather was a doctor too. Mm. And, um, and obviously he would think growing up, that he will become a doctor, mm. very likely. Yeah. And um, I don't think that that is because he necessarily has a gene to be a doctor, mm. that it's not the doctor talent that necessarily runs in a family. Mm. I think it is more the environment mm. that he grew up in. That, that he was surrounded with these doctors, who probably his parents' friends were also doctors. Mm. And I think um, that can influence him as he grows up mm. a lot, in my opinion, in a positive way here. So do you think, though, the counter-argument to that is that if you accept the premise that a doctor would have a, a fairly high IQ, then if we agree with that premise that a doctor would have a high IQ then is i is an iq genetically determined because if there is any genetic factors to a high iq then tom being a doctor will be to a certain extent genetically driven if we accept that premise to a certain extent yes but um it also could be that maybe his iq is to a certain extent it fits mm. to to um to enroll in the university to become to start becoming a doctor mm. but um, I think the rest of it if he doesn't necessarily has the talent um, genetically mm. he will push himself because he will have that um, that, that that drive that that, mm. that is what he must do So I guess there's certain things that we can definitely give compelling arguments that the environmental factors and the beliefs and behaviours are um, significant to someone's um, progression or lack of progression. So I guess, you know, if Jess is um, smoking and is smoking consistently every day, then this will have a detrimental effect on her health. And I think that could be an example that could be considered an epigenetic example, right? Would you agree with that? Um, yes, I guess. Um, but it also could be that Jess's mother smoked mm. and, um, and therefore um, Jess maybe is just... She, she has that weakness mm. that um, that she's easily tempted. Um, so, yes, I don't know. So what about another example then? If you take, um, you know, if you take someone like Sarah and she has these positive social interactions and these positive social, these positive social interactions um, have a positive impact on her intellectual development 
could we then make an argument that the environmental factors have been significant in increasing her intelligence and that that increase in her intelligence is linked to specifically the social interactions but clearly that's the environment and therefore isn't necessarily linked to her genetics. So to me that would indicate that that's a good example of the genes and the environment and perhaps the belief they work collaboratively as opposed to working separately which again falls into the into the epi, epigenetic argument if we conclude that epigenetics includes nature and includes nurture.